So I have spent my life studying dozens of languages, probably almost 50 so far, and one of the most common questions I get asked is which is the hardest and which is the easiest? Now I definitely have answers to these questions which we will get into, but sometimes it is denied that there is even such a thing as a hardest language or an easiest language. Every language has its difficult points, it is claimed, depending on your native language. For example, Japanese is commonly regarded as one of the most difficult languages for English speakers to learn, but for Koreans it's actually considered one of the easiest because of how similar Korean and Japanese Japanese grammars are. Well, I can tell you categorically that some languages are harder than others in absolute terms, and this simple example will show you why. In many languages, verbs conjugate or change their form. Think of Spanish, right? Yo como, I eat, tu comes, you eat, and ella come, she eats. But in Norwegian, that same chart looks like this. I eat is je spiser, you eat is du spiser, and she eats is hun spiser. The verb is the same in all three cases. And it's unquestionably easier to learn the verb to eat in any given language when it doesn't change all the time. Learning one form of a verb is always easier than learning six, no matter what your native language. Now, that doesn't prove that Norwegian is overall an easier language to learn than Spanish, just that it is definitely easier to master the verb to eat in Norwegian than in Spanish. Now, you could argue that for speakers of Portuguese, it actually is easier to learn how to say to eat in Spanish than in Norwegian because of how similar the two verbs work in Spanish. Spanish and Portuguese, but for the vast majority of the world's population, Norwegian verbs are generally easier to learn than Spanish ones. So when you add up all the possible features of a language like grammar, pronunciation, script, you find that some languages simply take more time to master than others. And that's exactly what the United States government's Foreign Service Institute, which has been teaching US government diplomats foreign languages for almost 100 years, finds when it gets its students to learn different languages. Category 1 languages like Italian or Swedish generally take 24 weeks of classroom study to acquire general professional proficiency, while Category 4 languages like Arabic or Chinese take 88 weeks of classroom study to acquire professional proficiency, or almost four times the amount of time it takes to master Category 1 languages. So of all the languages I've ever studied, which has been the hardest? The answer has not been Chinese, Arabic, or Korean, all very difficult languages in their own right, but drum roll please, Navajo. This is a Native American language spoken in the southwest corner of the United States for hundreds of years before the United States even existed. So what makes it so difficult? Well, unlike English, where verbs mostly change according to a few basic tenses, like I eat versus I ate, in Navajo, verbs change like a Rubik's Cube depending on seven different modes, 12 different aspects, and 10 sub-aspects, which mix and match to generate different forms like a giant times table. For example, in English we have the single verb, to handle, but in Navajo there's a different verb if you repeatedly handle something, nush uh, versus to habitually handle something, yish uh, versus to handle something, but you're not done yet, and the handling begins and ends instantaneously, yish uh. And lest you think you can just simply memorize all of these forms, Navajo verbs are, as one scholar describes them, a hopeless maze of irregularities, so you'll just have to learn each verb one by one. And did I mention that verbs also vary depending on the physical characteristics of the object? So instead of one verb, to give, like in English, in Navajo there are 11 different verbs to give depending on what you're giving. Are you giving a flat, flexible object, like a blanket? In which case, nisos. Or a container, like a cup of water? In which case, nikad. Though that will of course vary if the cup is full or not. And good luck looking any of this up in a dictionary! The problem is that verbs in Navajo are constructed from basic roots with an extremely complex system involving hundreds of prefixes and suffixes that are added to the root to form more complicated meanings. For instance, there is no verb to plow in Navajo. Instead, to express the meaning of plow, you have to add a continuous series of prefixes to the root word dlad, or tear. So the word ninawishdlad in Navajo is six separate prefixes, ni, na, ho, he, Sh and sh all added to the root word tear in order to form the meaning plow. Think of all the mental math you need to do every time to form a verb. But that's just the verbs! As if the language wasn't difficult enough already, Navajo nouns also have animacy, with supernatural beings at the top, then humans, then infants and big animals, then mid-sized animals, then small animals, then insects, then natural forces, then inanimate objects and things, and then abstractions. And this actually affects word order because the most animate nouns have to come first in the sentence. So in Navajo you can't say a bird pecked a girl because in Navajo a girl is more animate than a bird. So instead you need to say the girl was pecked by a bird. And you'll have to keep this unusual category in mind every time you form a sentence in the language. And as you may have already noticed by now, pronunciation is also extremely complex with rare sounds like also tones, ish ah versus ish ah, and glottal stops in words like ya can't even pronounce that right. Ya-a-te. 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 
Here's a clip of what the president of the Navajo Nation sounds like. But even beyond grammar and pronunciation, according to one scholar, quote, the pattern of Navajo thought and linguistic expression is totally unlike that of European languages. And in my experience, not just European languages. I've studied many, many Asian and African languages, and in my experience, those languages are usually far more intuitive to learn than Navajo, including seemingly exotic languages like Mandarin Chinese, which Navajo makes look like an absolute cakewalk. Indeed, Navajo is so strange and incomprehensible to non-natives that it was famously used by the Navajo code talkers to transmit critical American military messages during World War II, and their code was never cracked. What about the easiest language in the world? Well, the answer might surprise you. It's Indonesian. Although we should first make a distinction between the easiest language in absolute terms and the easiest language for English speakers to learn. It's probably easier for a native English speaker to learn Dutch or Norwegian than Indonesian because of how similar those languages are to English. But in absolute terms, the language that an alien from outer space with no prior knowledge of any human language would be able to learn the fastest is, in my opinion, Indonesian. And despite how different it is from English, once you try learning this outrageously elegant language, you will very quickly be asking yourself, why don't all languages work like this? Let's take verbs. In most languages, verbs change a lot. So in English, for example, you have I eat, present tense, but you also have I ate, past tense, and he eats, third person. And in supposedly easy languages like Spanish, you have literally dozens of conjugations per verb, all of which often need to be memorized as there are tons of irregularities. I mean, the Spanish conjugation charts honestly scare the crap out of me every time I look at them. But in Indonesian, there is only one form per verb. But how will I know if something happened in the past or present if the verb doesn't change based on context? In Indonesian, rather than saying, I am working tomorrow, or I worked yesterday, you simply say, I work tomorrow. Aku bekerja besok. Or, I work yesterday. Aku bekerja kemarin. And somehow, despite verbs not arbitrarily changing dozens of times for absolutely no reason, hundreds of millions of people in Indonesia are able to understand each other in an advanced 21st century economy with absolutely no problem at all. And so many other things about this language make verbs ridiculously easy to remember. Indonesian doesn't have grammatical gender, so he and she are the same word, and you don't have two words for friend depending on gender, like amigo and amiga in Spanish. You don't need to learn different plurals for words, like mouse versus mice, or ox versus oxen. You just double the noun. That was easy. Mice is just mouse mouse, or a lot of mouse. And the same goes with every other noun in the language. Many more complex words are formed from other words in ways that are extremely memorable. To be careful in Indonesian is simply hati hati, which literally means heart heart. And best of all, unlike English, where R-E-A-D can be pronounced either read or read depending on tense, Indonesian is a super phonetic language where words are spoken exactly as they are written. So no Indonesian spelling bees. So here's my question. Why aren't all languages as easy to learn as Indonesian? Maybe languages get something by being hard. Like, if you spend three years learning Korean to achieve the same level of conversational ability as you would with only one year of studying Swedish, maybe you get something with all that extra time. Perhaps you can use that Korean to say more expressive or beautiful or precise things than you could with Swedish. I've actually heard this claim with two languages in particular, Russian and Arabic, that have reputations as being ferociously difficult. Arabic, it is said, has such beautiful sayings that are impossible to even express in other languages, while the case precision of Russian means that reading literature in Russian is a much more intellectual experience than in any other language. Now, personally, as someone who has studied more languages than almost anyone else on the planet, I think this is total nonsense. These claims are impossible to argue with because they're always presented as subjective feelings. You wouldn't understand unless you already spoke my language fluently. And when I press people for more detail, the claims always fall apart on further scrutiny. No doubt Arabic has many beautiful sayings, but is there really no way a non-Arabic speaker could ever understand them upon further explanation? Then how did you even learn them in the first place? And is the greatness of the Russian novel Anna Karenina because it was written in Russian? Or because it expresses universal human emotions that people from Morocco and Malaysia are equally able to understand? And when you try to bring actual data to bear upon this question, it seems really unlikely that language affects the development of human societies. Hong Kong and Iceland score about equally well in the United Nations Human Development Index, despite languages that couldn't be more different from each other. Chinese has some of the world's greatest literature despite having relatively simple grammar. And same for English, by the way. 
And as I said before, hundreds of millions of people in Indonesia are able to express themselves and get along perfectly fine despite not having verbs that conjugate. From my experience having studied so many languages, it seems much more likely that people everywhere think mostly alike and that no one language is better than any other. Disagree with me? Post examples of why your favorite language is better in the comments and I'll see you next time.